Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Rocha Salgado. I'm a documentary filmmaker from Brazil, and I would like to talk about how is it to live in Brazil at this moment. Uh, yes, uh, Brazil is the country you know. A country of happy people, carnival, caipirinhas, but also a young country grow, growing too fast. Let me start with a bit of my past. I grew up in a typical Brazilian family from the 80s. And that is, that is a mother, four kids, and no father. As a typical Brazilian father from the 80s, my father went to buy a pack of cigarettes and never came back. <laughs> so, my mother had to raise us alone. But there is one detail I forgot to, t to tell you. We were not four, but seven. How comes? My grandparents, they had no money to raise their 14 children, so my mother just brought home one of her brother and two of her sisters. So, what my mother would do uh, alone, with 6 teenagers and a babe of four? You may think, here, of course, in Holland, <laughs> you may think that's where the state uh, and its welfare system steps in. But there are no such things as uh, state support for abandoned mothers and kids in Brazil. They are just abandoned. So, my mother had to work, and she worked very hard every day. And we? The nice thing to have a very busy mother is that uh, we were alone every day, all day. In the morning, we had to go to school, of course. But the rest of the day, we could do whatever we wanted until my mother came home very late, tired, and went to sleep. My mother had no time for a kiss, neither for talk or to care for us. I remember we watched many telenovelas, that is a kind of we, our soap series, soap uh, operas, but that was all. There ended our family life. But I, I don't blame my mother, okay? It's just, <laughs> I don't bl blame my mother. She had no time for us, but also she had no time for herself. The bills had to be paid. About our school. In Brazil, there are two kinds of school. You have the private school, that's for the winners, and you have the public school, the one I studied at. I can tell you our school was very dirty, falling apart. There was no toilet paper. There was no teachers. And when they showed up, they were quite unmotivated. Our English teacher, for example, every single lesson, he, could, he, he brought up a tape recorder and put on Imagine from John Lennon. We sang it over and over and over again. I knew he couldn't speak English, <laughs> but I just studied four years with him. Four years we sang this song, and I now I bring some message here, no? <laughs> so, um, compared to other families in Brazil, I'm I'm really privileged to have a mother who could manage to pay the bills. And if you ask my mother the question. TEDx selected for this talk today, she, will, she would immediately answer, 
Just fulfill your obligation and give food and roof to your kids. And she's right, of course. Now, let's go back to the present. Of course, Brazil changed a lot since my childhood. Just in the last 10 years, our government managed to raise up 40 million people out of misery. 40 million people were given the chance to buy things and food. Also, for the first time in our history, we are the world's seventh biggest economy. Well, if they didn't degrade us yet, we are there. So, there are very impressive numbers, of course. But I started my talk today telling you the, the story of my childhood to try to show you that all these big numbers, they do not matter if Brazil continues to suffer the abandonment. Abandonment in all its forms. Abandonment is for me synonymous of forgotten, unattended, left behind, denied of the care. Let's take Sao Paulo, for example. This Brazilian state, known for its large amount of rain and rivers, is going through a huge water crisis. When I came there to make a documentary about it, I discovered that wasn't connected to the climate change. But instead, it's caused by an incredible mistreatment of the water and contamination of its rivers. I found out that Brazil as a whole, only 49% of the population has access to sewage system. And only 39% of the collected sewage gets treated. In other words, 81% of all the dirt we produce flows to our rivers and to the sea. But we all pay the sewage tax. I went to film in a small town who lies on Sao Paulo's biggest river, just where the river flows out of the megalopolis. And the river there looks like this. The smell hurts in your nose and throat. The locals said that normally it looks worse than that that every day the, this river brings dead human bodies from Sao Paulo. And the cancer is really common there. And this is the environment. I mean, this river in this such, such a beautiful place. And it really hurted here. So, at this point, uh, I would, it would be great to show you something more positive, but uh, instead, I, I decided to show another piece of one of my documentaries, so, sorry. <laughs> que isso, jogando a bomba dentro da casa das pessoas. Dentro da casa das pessoas. Coitada, não esfrega não, 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 não esfrega não. 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 Não esf
Não esfrega não, vai ficar bem, vai ficar bem, vai ficar bem, vai ficar bem. Não esfrega não, senhora, não esfrega não, calma. So, from close distance, Brazil isn't the wonder you have been seen uh, on the TV during the World Cup. To tell you the truth, the World Cup was one big lie. It was another excuse to steal huge amounts of money and to commit all sorts of crimes. And the same is happening now with the preparations of the Olympic Games. This favela I just showed you, it, uh, it was built in a no man's land over 25 years ago. During these years, these people, they tried to build a simple life for themselves. They built the house, and somehow they managed to get it connected to water and electricity and to get rid of their waste. And if they did so alone, in such a place, was because it was in order to survive completely abandonment. But still, our authorities, they came there and they forced them away. Let's show other person who, who lived there. Foi aqui que eu trabalhei 15 anos da minha vida. Entendeu? 15 anos, trabalhei aqui. Nessa lojinha. Veja que não é pequena. E eles não querem me dar como loja. Por quê? This is Dona Leda. Uh, she told me that everyone in the community was very happy with the news that Brazil would host the World Cup. She was already planning what, she, what all she could sell in her small shop next to the, to the Maracanã Stadium. I filmed it uh, two weeks before everything was destroyed. And in the place came a, a parking space that the FIFA needed. And the worst thing is that nobody knew anything or understood anything. They were, they were just abandoned. But there is still hope, and I really mean it. There are many people in nowadays Brazil who put their, their heart in what they do and fight for a better country. But we need more. What I'm trying to say is, uh, as you prob probably uh, understood from my speech, we Brazilians, we are very uh, good in complain at complaining. <laughs> uh, but what if instead, everyone suddenly tried to do their best to build a better country. Let's say at my old school, what if there was at least one committed teacher? Can you imagine what that change would just a single committed teacher do for one school? What if my father along with the father of other five million Brazilian children, would not abandon us? What if the sewage company in Sao Paulo just fulfilled its obligation and treated the sewage? Or just showed a bit of respect for our rivers? My life itself may be an example. The fact that I, I managed to graduate as a film director here in Holland, it was possible just because I met a couple who helped me a lot. Without them, I, I would not stand here today. I really like the team uh, TEDx gave to me, be the cure, <laughs> small steps matter. Because I think that's where the solution of Brazil may be. If our authorities don't care 
for our country and its people, then I think we have to get to act into action. Fulfilling our obligation, as my mother says, is not enough. I think that only if each one of us try to change something a little bit, then we may manage to get out of this mess. Thank you.